In today's video, we're gonna be doing a full walkthrough of the Marine X 60.2. I'm gonna be showing you how it's been running for the first couple of months and all the equipment that I've got running on the tank as well. But if you're new to my channel, don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on that bell so that you're notified when I'm uploading new videos. And as always, such a huge thank you to all of my subscribers and sponsors. It means the absolute world. So thank you so much. Now, before I take you back home and show you the tank, um, for those of you who are new to my channel and maybe missed some of my previous videos, just to catch you up to speed, my goal for this tank was to have an SPS dominant tank. So acros, SPS and everything. Um, that's really my vision for the tank is to have a beautiful, SPS tank. Now I've had some huge learning curves in the last few weeks. Um, you know I've had my six foot tank which is you know got so much water volume and then going down to such a smaller tank um, I've definitely had a few hiccups along the way. So um, yeah just a heads up when you see the tank and it's not looking as awesome as it used to and I am still fighting cyanobacteria man it has been hectic <laughs> so um yeah so yeah just giving a heads up the tank really isn't looking as awesome as I would really have hoped and dreamed it would right now um but yeah big lessons learned so anyway let's get back home and I'll show you the tank holy dooly that was windy out there <laughs> anyways but this is my beautiful water box marine x 60.2 and I'll just start by saying sorry for repeating myself for those of you who have followed me for a while um you'll already have known this but um, the whole setup has pretty much been gifted or sponsored to me so I mean I got to pick a lot of the equipment that I used on the tank but I think it's important to be open with you guys about that and I finally found a cable management system for this tank I'm super excited anyway enough of my rambly let's go first of all here is a full tank shot I went with the oak because I think it's really different and I like it um, I've got black on the six foot tank and I just really really liked the look of the oak um, it's a really really nice color also i find the black that if you've got any sort of salt water that's dripped down it shows up so much on black whereas you know you can get away with it um, with the oak it won't show up as much and i just think it looks super fresh and nice i like it i'll say as well that pretty much all of the equipment i've got on the tank i have done individual videos on all of them on unboxing and all of that sort of stuff so i'll start from the top and work my way down and i'll go through absolutely everything that i've got in here um, i've got the max bet jump mj l165 on the tank um, i actually won that in a competition pretty early on um, so yeah max spect were running a competition and i won that so i really like that light i think it's a really neat looking light and it's all sort of programmable on your phone i've just got it set on the sps pre-setting sort of thing at the moment um, but yeah a really really nice light um, i've also got this DD jump guard, I actually just did a video the other week on that one. So if you are interested in that, I think it's a really nice jump guard and I like the fact that it's black. Then I have this Tunzi Nanostream Wave Maker, which as you can see, still has cyanide on it. I should have cleaned it down for this video, but I did actually want to show you um, what the tank's been looking like because um, I did do a video on the cyano issue that I was having and I showed you how bad it was. Um, so I actually wanted to leave the tank how it is just so that you guys can see where it's at. I didn't want to do a huge clean of the tank and then just pretend like everything's been all good. I wanted to show you exactly um, what it's like at the moment. So as you can see, we still have cyano um, on the corals. Unfortunately, I did lose those other corals. Yeah, if you missed that video, um, I'll leave the link up above, um, but I basically explained what happened in the tank. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if any of these are gonna make it. The only ones that are still, look, there's my little fish, little Lutzy, having a little chump away there. But as you can see, there are some polyps still on that green Monty, and there's one at the back. It's really hard to film though. Can you see that there? still got polyps so I don't know we'll see how we go but that's the only one that looks like it might come back and this one here which I also need to um, it's still got some polyps on it as you can see I need to give it a brush down to get rid of the cyano but this is actually really good compared to what it has been with the cyano it's honestly been at the point where I do a water change and do a manual removal and then the next day the sand is completely covered with cyano again so I actually haven't done a water change for um, I think a week now and it's at the point now where it's every single time um, I've cleaned it off or done a manual removal it's getting less and less every time so we're getting there <laughs> we are getting there but as you can see I wanted to show you that 
it is still an issue. I'm absolutely gutted that I lost those corals. Um, and, you know, fingers crossed I can make that green Monty come back. I'm trying to brush off the cyano every single day to give it half a chance. And I'm not gonna be giving SPS another go until the tank is about a year old. A lot of you said in the comment section that especially in such a small tank, um, I shouldn't, um, you know, be doing SBS until the tank is like at least a year old. So I'm going to take that on board and um, hopefully just get some fish. Um, the fish I've been wanting to get seem to have dropped off the face of the planet. <laughs> I'm actually, yeah, just waiting on them to come back in stock. And then, yeah, I'll just focus on the fish. I've got my beautiful little lawnmower, Blenny. I absolutely adore him. He's just the cutest. Look at him. He's so cute. He's a chunky monkey. He has been so well fed. Look how fat he is. And he still eats all day long. It's amazing. All right, so moving down to the sump and the cabinet has a push-in release there, um, which is quite nice. So this is my sump as it stands today. Um, so I've got my heater in the chamber over here. I've got the filter sock and the filter sock silencer on top there. And I've got my Octo skimmer here, which I really like this skimmer. It's really easy to clean, um, really easy to dial in by using the dial here and moving it from side to side. So that's pretty much all I've got in there. I've got the Aquaforest Life Biofill um, in a little bag here. So I've got that there. I've also got the Octo return pump there which has the float switch valve there. That'll switch it off if the water level drops below that line. So I really like that it prevents the return pump from running dry. I think it's an awesome safety feature. And then lastly, I have the lovely Kamoa X5 doser. Um, obviously, I've just got some of the lines just sitting in, in here at the moment, but I am actually using it to dose my RODI water into the system. So I've sort of set it on my app to, um, to dose the amount of water that I need. I've got a little marker on the sump um, and I kind of know that it needs to stay within those levels. I will eventually, of course, start dosing, um, but for the moment, I'm just using it for that. I will end up getting an auto top off, but for the moment, it does the trick um, dosing um, with my Kamoa doser. The chamber here holds, I think it's just over, I think it's like seven and a half liters that this holds here. So I just top that up. Um, with RODI water and then it just doses it into the system. You've got your gate valve there as well which is really easy to use. The tank actually came with all of the plumbing which is awesome. I'm such a fan of that. I think it's a really neat looking tank um, and I really am happy with the equipment that I've got on there. But yeah, so that's a little run through. Oh, and my cable management. So, <laughs> just to be brutally honest, this, this is what my cable management looked like before. I was hiding it behind this plant and um, you know, one thing led to another. I think I had about five kilometers worth of cables, um, you know, hiding behind here, which, you know, they all come with really long cables, but if you've got a tiny tank like this, um, it's kind of like, where do I put it? So I ended up getting this basket and using about 300 zip ties <laughs> um, to, you know, sort of just, make it look a little bit neater. I mean, you can still sort of see it behind the pot plant, but at least it's way easier to go, all right, here's this, like these are my two main controls that I use, um, that I need to use the food timer for when I'm cleaning. So I've got my wave maker and the return pump, which I can put the pauses on. I've got easy access to them now. I do have these, you know, little post-it notes folded over, um, labeling what they all are. I'm at least happy with how it turned out. I mean. Yeah, it was literally like, it felt like six kilometers worth of cabling that I had to, you know, find somewhere. But at least with this, you've got so much you can attach it to. So, I mean, don't ask me to try and take off one piece of equipment. It's all cable tied there for the rest of its life, but at least it's, you know, neater than it was. So anyway, I'm happy with it. <laughs> well, thank you so much for watching. I absolutely love this little tank. And, you know, now that I'm starting to get on top of the cyano issue, um, and it'll start to get a little bit more stable from now on. Um, yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> um, I'm really going to take it slow. And as always, I'm going to share everything that goes on with the tank. So if you'd like to stay tuned on the tank, don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on that bell. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time.